بسم الله بسم الله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ونبيه وحبيبه بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ثم أما بعد إن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار قال صلى الله عليه وسلم بدا الاسلام غريبا وسيعود كما بدا غريبا فطوبى للغرباء قيل يا رسول الله من الغرباء قال الذين يصلحون اذا فسد الناس وفي لفظ اخر هم الذين يصلحون ما افسد الناس من سنتي صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم it was narrated that the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said Islam began as something strange, and it shall return to being something strange. So give glad tidings to those strangers. The Sahaba asked the Prophet wasallam, Who are those strangers, O Prophet of Allah? He replied saying, those that correct the people when they become corrupt. And in another narration, those who correct my sunnah that have been corrupted by the people after me. And in another narration, he said in response to the same question, they are a small group of people among a large evil population. Those who oppose them are more than those who follow them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-An'am, وَإِن تُطِعَ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُدُلُّوكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And if you obey most of those on earth, they will mislead you away from Allah's path. And in Surah Yusuf, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ and most of mankind will not believe, even if you desire it eagerly. When Surah Al-Ma'idah, he said as well, وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ لَفَاسِقُونَ And truly most of men are fasiqeen, rebellious and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ayat is an indication that the majority of the people are corrupt. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicated in many of the ayat, that few of the people are righteous and few of people are good. One of the scholars said that he enjoined good and forbid it bad till the time, at the time when the norm was committing immoral actions to the point that he said, I couldn't find anyone around me that I can call a friend. He raised the sunnah of change is that when we see something wrong as the Prophet wasallam said, we need to change it. As believers, we should restify, strive to restify wrong doings or wrong things using our hands, our words. If not, we at least reject it in our hearts. Al Fudayl ibn Ayyad, one of the early scholars of Islam, he saw a man and he wanted to give him an advice. He saw that the man was not on the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Fudayl approached the man and he asked him, Brother, how old are you? He said, I'm 60 years old. And in some beautiful words, al fudail ibn Ayyad replied to him. He said, Subhanallah, you've been walking towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 60 years. Tu shiku an tasil. You're almost there. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A'maru ummati ma bayna sittina wa sab'een. That my ummah will age to be between the 60s and 70s in the majority. So the man said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And he said it carelessly. So al fudayl told him, do you understand what is the meaning of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon? He said, yes, that I'm the servant of Allah that, and for him I'm going back. So al fudayl ibn Ayyad, he responded to him, he said, ya akhi, man arifa annahu lillahi abdun wa annahu ilayhi raji' falya'alam annahu mawqufun bayna yadayh. وَمَنْ عَرِفَ أَنَّهُ مَوْقُوفٌ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ اللَّهِ فَلْيَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ مَسْؤُولٌ وَمَنْ عَلِمْ أَنَّهُ مَسْؤُولٌ فَلْيَعُدُّ لِلسُّؤَالِ جَوَابًا If you know that you're servant for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for him you're going back, you have to understand you'll be standing between his hands. And if you understand and know that, you have to understand that you will be questioned in the judgment day. 
Subhanallah. And whoever know and understand that he will be questioned, he should prepare an answer for the questioning. إِنَّمَا الْبَلِيغُ مَنْ وَجَدَ شَيْئًا يَقُولُهُ يَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ The eloquent one is the one who finds something to answer or something to say in the judgment day. The profound words that earned the praise of the Prophet ﷺ, they were spoken by a man whose heart was brimming with unwavering faith. قَصِّبْ نِسَاعِدَةُ الْإِيَادِي The Prophet ﷺ, when he heard what he said, he said, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ قَصًّا أَمَا أَنَّهُ سَيُبْعَثُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا May Allah have mercy on Qas, indeed who will be raised on the day of resurrection as an Ummah on his own. And he said as well, because it was narrated, the Prophet ﷺ used to see Qas in the market of Akkad in Mecca, sitting in his camel advising people. With what? At the time, the Christians in the Arab Peninsula, they said, Al-Masih ibn Allah, that Jesus is the Son of God. The group of Jews that lived in the Arab Peninsula, they said, Uzairun ibn Allah, that Uzair is the Son of God. And the rest of the Arabs, they worshipped every idol, every stone, every tree that they can find, they used to worship it. And Qas by himself, on his own, used to say, La ilaha illallah. He was on the faith of Sayyidina Isa alayhi, ibn as alayhi salam, and he was on the faith of Tawheed. Subhanallah. As if Qas heard the hadith al-Qudsi, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ibadi, innama hiya a'malukum, uhsiha lakum, thumma awafikum iyaha. فَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرًا فَلْيَحْمَدِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ وَجَدَ خَيْرَ ذَلِكَ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهِ O my slave, it slaves, it is but your deeds that account for you and then recompense you for it. So let him who finds good in the hereafter, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful for him that he guided him to do good and who finds other than that, not to blame anyone other than himself. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ آدَمَ فَابْتَلَاهُ ثُمَّ اشْتَبَاهُ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ وَهَدَى وَبَعَثَ نُوحًا فصنع الفلك بأمر الله وجرى ونجى الخليل من النار فصار حرها بردا وسلاما عليه فاعتبروا بما جرى In the story of Sayyidina Adam عليه السلام God created him and put him into the test ultimately choosing him for repentance and guidance Similarly Sayyidina Nuh عليه السلام was chosen by God to build an ark and navigate the flood waters as per his command and by saving Sayyidina Ibrahim عليه السلام from the fire and transforming its heat into a cool and peaceful environment God provided a powerful lesson for us to learn from, from prophets that were like strangers at their time because they called people for Tawheed. Adam alayhi salam, he endured tribulations until his departure from this world. Ibrahim alayhi salam faced the ordeal of fire and the sacrifice of his own child. Ya'qum alayhi salam whipped until he lost his sight. Yusuf alayhi salam was cast into a will, sold into slavery and imprisoned. Musa alayhi salam endured hardships from Pharaoh, Pharaoh and the opposition from his own people. Ayyub alayhi salam lost all his children and suffered from a debilitating disease. Isa alayhi salam and his mother, they can find no place to call home. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam endured, endured poverty, oppression and persecution. Umar, Uthman, Ali, al Hussein, Sa'id ibn al Jubayr, and they, they were all killed along with Bilal, Ammar, and Sumayyah, Ibn Musayyib, and Malik. They faced torture. Ibn al Zubayr was cru crucified. Imam Ahmad was leashed. Imam al Bukhari was expelled, and Ibn Taymiyyah was imprisoned. All those people, prophets, and individuals that we mentioned faced torture, humiliation, and even death because they were strangers at their time among a big evil population. Wasn't the Prophet ﷺ was called a mad poet by the kuffar of Quraysh? Would we leave our gods for a mad poet? SubhanAllah, and who's the Prophet ﷺ, when he started his message, he was a stranger among evil, big evil, group of evil people. That is the price for being a stranger in the time and day where morals and faith are between, rare, rare between people. Let's look at one in depth at one of the stories of the prophets that was a stranger at his time and learn the lesson from that story. The verses are describing a big scenery for one of the biggest events in the history of mankind. Nuh alayhi salam and handful of people that followed him were the strangers in that story. After 950 years, only few believed in him and some narrations 11 and some narrations 15 people. 
and many did not, including his own son. He has been handling, building the ship on the ground for years, waiting for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveyed to him to happen. And in no time, everything on earth started to look different. The flood came and the ship is sailing in waves as high as mountains. And Nuh salam is calling his son to ride with him. Initially, his son believed that he was in a secure place as he was on a solid ground, high mountain, while viewing others on the ship as being in danger. Think of the ship of Sayyidina Nuh salam as the ship of Iman and Tawheed sailing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about it and think the hardships that everyone say, face when he sail in the ship of Tawheed and Iman, facing all the atrocities, the oppression from others. Same look many of us think about what's happening now in the ship sailing in Gaza. SubhanAllah, many think that we're safe here and the people of Gaza are in danger. But in reality, they are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will be questioned about the support that we provided to them. Actually, our ship that is sailing here is sailing in very high waves. And I see many falling of that ship every day, forgetting what's happening to their brothers and sisters there. The issue is not an issue of showing sympathy or empathy. It's a matter of belonging. We belong to them and they belong to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ The believing men and believing women are all lies for one another. Where is our position on that ship? Are you working on your iman? Think of this ship as the Indian train. Most of us saw this Indian train on TV. The people that worked hard to purchase a ticket in the business class, they are sitting comfortably inside while thousands are sitting hanging on the side of the train and on the top of the train. Once the train get in a crash or hit a pump, the people that are hanging loose or hanging weak on the sides and on the top, they will fall, they'll go to waste. But the people are, that are inside, yes, they will be injured maybe but they'll still be saved. Think about your Iman that way. The true measure of our Iman is revealed during times of trial and tribulation. It is in these moments that the strength of your Iman truly shines. And then you'll be able to assess where is your position in the ship of Tawheed before it reaches its final destination, which is death. SubhanAllah. Today, Gaza embodies the spirit of the strangers that the Prophet wasallam mentioned in the Hadith. Despite facing overwhelming odds, they refuse to be cowed by the world of powers. They stand resolute, choosing freedom over servitude of material gains. Their narrative is one of resilience and beauty, reviving forgotten principle, principles and instilling hope in the hearts of believers. Insha'Allah, they will inscribe their names in the annals of history and in the gates of Jannah before they reach it, insha'Allah. And what is unique about them and what's making the whole world at wonder of how they are doing that is that there is a shaheed that is being treated by an expected shaheed and the person who's filming the atrocities as an expected shaheed and subhanallah that one that prays janazah over them is an expected shaheed and if you ask any any of the kids of gaza what's your name you will say i'm the shaheed the son of the shaheed and when i grow up inshallah if allah give me the time and the time to grow up my son will be the shaheed the son of the shaheed Different mentality, they live in a different planet, in a different world. They live close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all time, as death is just by their eyes. مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ رِجَالٌ صَدَقُوا مَا عَاهَدُوا اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَدَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا Among the believers are men that are true to what they promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among them is he who fulfilled his promise till the day he dies. And among them is he who awaits for his chance. And they did not alter, subhanAllah. Where do we stand from all this? Do we stand up for our commitments to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's two types of people in this world. Those who observe, learn, and act upon their knowledge. And those who remain passive, ignoring the lessons unfolding before them. Are we mere spectators? Shedding tears but failing to act? Are we consumed only by self-interest, oblivious to the suffering of others? This is a question that everyone has to ask to himself. If you're angry, and a lot, of people are, a lot of people are angry from the videos and the sceneries that they see on TV, and ask, where's Allah from all that? Control your anger, as it will turn against you, and seek knowledge from the people of knowledge. Seek knowledge from people of Gaza. They are the ones that are being slaughtered. And all what they say is Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. 
Ask Ashabul Ukhdud when the Nawas put them by the cliff, pushing them in the boiling pot, just because they said, Rabbun Allah, Subhanallah. To understand the why, when, and how concepts in Islam and why things are happening, watch and observe from those people in Gaza, Syria, Kashmir, Burma, Myanmar, and other places to learn. Islam teach us to control our anger before it controls us. Al-Muhajirun understood the fiqh of the ibtila, the good understanding of the tribulation as it happens. And they were called after their sacrifice as they did when they migrated with the Prophet wasallam, leaving behind their worldly gains and all their childhood memories. So this religion would reach you here today. Subhanallah. Because of their sacrifice. And the Ansar, they were called after their sacrifice to support the Muhajirun by splitting their wealth and all their worldly gains with them. Their great success story will be recited by us in the verses of the Qur'an till the judgment day as the entire history of mankind did not know a collective incidents, incidents such the event that happened between the Ansar and the Muhajirun and how they received them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آوَى وَنَصَرُوا أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ Those who believe and migrated with the Prophet sallallahu and commit jihad with him for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who receive them and give them shelter and victory those are the true mu'mins and they will receive a great forgiveness be to your brothers and sisters in Gaza like the Ansar were to an Muhajirun I learn a new lesson every day from Gaza Gaza is the school of Iman and patience Gaza is the school of fiqh and the school of Islam as we have not learned before Gaza the factory of men Gaza, the people that uncovered and pulled the rug from under those who claimed that they are the one who, ones who define morals and human rights. Those who see their kids and family members falling in front of them and all what they say is Alhamdulillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. People are dying from hunger, eating animal food if available, mixing sea water with sugar if present to sweeten it for kids to drink it. Subhanallah. And here we are, we're watching movies and comedies every day, detaching ourselves from the ongoing crisis, as if it's been normalized by time. Have we forgotten about what happened to our brothers and sisters? SubhanAllah. Or are we simply consumed by life distractions? Wallahi, wallahi. No matter how long it takes, Gaza, Sudan, Syria, Libya, Kashmir, Myanmar, the Igors, Moro, will be in my heart as it was the first day when all this started. It should be in all our hearts like that. We're the one body. Because while we go about our lives, there are brothers and sisters on the other side of the world that are being trialed and tested beyond material wealth. They face trials that touch the depths of their souls. They are being tested in their loved ones. There's some sceneries that I cannot depart my mind. Muhammad, this young boy, not more than eight or nine years old that went to fetch for some food and came back to find his whole building is under the rubble and 83 of his families are dead. SubhanAllah. And this heart-wrenching six-year-old Noor sitting on the top of her mother's dead body, pleading for her to come back. And this young boy, about four months ago, when the, flood, when the heavy rain came and the flood hit Khan Yunus in Gaza, this young boy that, wallahi, not more than eight or nine years old, he's carrying the dead body of his two-year-old sister and supporting himself by some poetic words, saying, Allahu ya'lamu ma nashku min al-alami, wa ma nu'anihi min deeqin wa min saqami, lakin lana fihi dhannun la yukhayibuna, hashahu an tarji'a al-aydi bila ni'ami. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know what we complain about and our pain, and he know the stress and the sickness that we're going through. But we believe in him that he will not let us go to waste, and we will not return back empty-handed. This young boy matured to be more wise than older men, holding his dead sister in his arms and saying he's not going to come back empty-handed. If we think about it, his vision goes beyond our vision. His vision is Jannah and seeing the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this mom crying over her children's bodies, saying they died on an empty stomach. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed them in heaven. Skyscrapers have been reduced to rubble. Yet, we witness men and women standing tall like mountains, subhanAllah, comforting themselves with verses of the Qur'an as they bury the remains of their children. They speak words that bring comfort and serve as a reminder 
that those men and women who believe that death is not the end will never be defeated, insha'Allah. They, subhanAllah, we should say thank you to the brothers and sisters in Gaza. Thank you. As there's many verses in the Quran that we did not understand the true meaning of those verses till we saw your patience, your iman, and your sacrifices. Al Jassas, one of the early scholars of Islam, said, Al Quran, lan yutqin ma'ani illa man yu'ani. The Quran will not perfect its meanings till you go through a situation that will tremble you, will shake you up, so you understand the meanings of those verses. Many argue that Gaza cannot be a constant, a constant presence in our life uh, every day. We cannot keep remember, remembering those bad sceneries, people dying every day. But when they asked Salah al Din once um, about the Al Quds Jerusalem, Bayt al Maqdis, uh, he said, How can I enjoy peaceful sleep and delicious food while the Aqsa is a hostage? We need to stand with our brothers and sisters, inshallah. And we're coming here today with life for relief and development. It's, uh, we've been there in Gaza for the last 30 years, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, they uh, bombed most of our hair houses, but we're still operating from under the rubble. The biggest project that is going right now for tents is the 100,000 tents that we start delivering. And there is 5,000 that already entered Khan Yus in Gaza. And please, inshallah, check our Facebook page and our website, lifeusa.org. Alhamdulillah, we deliver 5,000 meals on a daily basis, water, food, uh, blankets beside the tents. Brothers and sisters, your brothers and sisters need you desperately in Gaza. We will be questioned in the Judgment Day. Remember, the eloquent one is the one who finds words to say in the Judgment Day. We will be questioned, were we in the first of the line or the end of the line? Or we were not simply in the line to help our brothers and sisters. Thabat tariyaq al fitan, steadfast is the uh, to the path of Allah, the path of Allah subhanahu wa taala is the antidote and the remedy of tribulations. Just as waves in the sea, tribulations come one after the other, relentless and continuous. And our job is to support each other during those tribulations. Allahumma fi jumaatina al mubaraka, insur al murabitina al musalafina min ahli Gaza. Allahumma dhamir aadaahum aadaa al din, mansurhum bi nasrika ya kareem. واجعل كيد أعدائهم في نحورهم اللهم احفظ أرواحهم وأبناءهم وردهم إلى ديارهم مردا كريما آمنا اللهم لا تمر هذه الأيام إلا وقد فرشت عنهم بقدرتك يا قادر يا رحيم نعوذ بك يا الله من هذا العجز ونحن نرى إخواننا ولا نستطيع صرفا ولا دفعا ولا وصولا اللهم إنا نشكو إليك ضعف قوتنا وقلة حيلتنا وهواننا على الناس اللهم إنا نستودعك المسجد الأقصى اللهم مكنهم في الأرض كما مكنت الذين من قبلهم وعف عنهم وثبت قلوبهم على حبك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم هذه حالنا لا تخفى عليك وضعفنا ظاهر بين يديك فانصرنا بنصرك واغفر لنا ذنوبنا واستر عيوبنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما نسينا وأخطأنا اللهم كن لنا يا رب العالمين ولا تكن علينا عباد الله اذكروا الله وذكر الله أعلى وأولى وأتم وأهم وأجل أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة